Hello, Miss Fisher here. Uh, this is the introduction to Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. Before we discuss Catcher and its brilliance, I want to have a quick word on J.D. Salinger himself. Here's an image of him. Salinger grew up in New York and was drafted into World War II. It is argued that Salinger saw more of war's horrors than any other American. He was on Utah Beach and D-Day, I'm sorry, on D-Day, the Battle of the Bulge, and others. We believe that this is actually J.D. Salinger himself in this image. Just before he left, the New Yorker magazine accepted his short story, Slight Rebellion Off Madison, a story about a young man named Holden Caulfield wandering around New York City contemplating his pre-war jitters. However, because the story revolved around hesitancies concerning war, it wasn't run until after the war was over. Um, so even before he was drafted, um, J.D. Salinger was already writing stories and actually had been accepted by the New Yorker magazine, um, but they waited to um, publish it until after people, you know, to kind of not sip on, any, on anybody's toes. When he came back from the war, he published a few short stories to some mild critical acclaim, and it wasn't until The Catcher in the Rye that Salinger received fame. It's interesting to note that when he returned from seeing such atrocities, he unlike so many of his fellow soldiers, decided to write about a 16-year-old boy as opposed to an older man. Unfortunately, the fame and constant dissection of the novel, probably by annoying English teachers, led him into a state of reclusion. Reclusion means when you stay indoors and you, and you don't come out into society. So here's just a little image, um, a little funny image to, to help you understand what reclusion is. Maybe you've heard of the word hermit. Um, so there's a man here, he's sitting alone at a table, and it's called the Society of Hermits. And then the man says, right, everyone's here, so let's get started. Meaning nobody's there. <laughs> it was written in 1951, um, but is still 60 plus years later, one of the most banned books in America. Um, why is it banned? Well, um, for a number of reasons. First is the vulgar language, references to sex, blasphemy, undermining family values, and also encour encouraging teenage rebellion. So here's actually a banned books map uh, in 2010. A blue dot means that a book was challenged or banned by a parent, school, or library, etc. during that year. Um, and there's quite a few, few blue dots. Uh, this book is also infamous because it is behind some of the most famous assassination plots in American history. John Hinckley Jr.'s attempt on Ronald Reagan was supposedly a result of... Uh, reading Catcher in the Rye and being inspired to, to rebel. Mark David Chapman's assassination of John Lennon. Um, as he was being arrested, Chapman actually pulled the book out of his back pocket, and inside it he had written, To Holden Caulfield, from Holden Caulfield. This is my statement. So, interesting. Uh, however, one of the reasons why Catcher is so great is because it portrays two contrasting literary techniques, realism and romanticism. Um, and it doesn't sound great, but it really, it's actually quite brilliant um, that he was able to have a realistic as uh, component and a romantic aspect to his, uh, to his novel. And the fact that they're contrasting just shows the inner struggle that Holden Caulfield has as a teenager growing up in New York City and not really sure how he feels or what to do. So, realism. What is realism? It's, it's, it is basically what it sounds like. It's just a um, wanting to, uh, leaning towards the actual or the realistic. And here's an image on the screen of a realistic painting. This is just what these probably these people looked like. There's no exaggerations. There's no impressionistic interpretations of these people. This is just what life is like for these folks. 
So how is realism used in Catcher in the Rye? Well, first is the use of language. The 16-year-old jargon that's being used is an example of realism. The fact that it's a social criticism of family and school makes it realistic. And it also just devotes time to real problems that adolescents face in the process of maturity. Um, science is a form of realism, as it only deals with established proven facts. Romanticism, on the other hand, we've talked a little bit about this when uh, we were talking earlier in the year, Henry David Thoreau, um, those authors. Romanticism is, is an emphasis on aesthetics, on beauty, on emotions, on the connection with the sublime or um, the divine. So here's an image of a, a pretty romantic idea, right? This man by himself, his foot up on the ledge, looking out into the vastness, um, probably contemplating life, right? So what are the romantic elements that are found in Catcher in the Rye? Well, there's the innocence of childhood. There's the idealizing the past. There's an emphasis on individual growth and discovery. And there's a quest for truth, truth of the world, truth of himself, etc. Romanticism, romanticism also stresses the Byronic hero, who's a gifted, idealized, often misunderstood loner. And we see aspects of that in Catcher in the Rye. Uh, but you're probably asking yourself, qualities of a hero? Holden Caulfield can't be a hero. Um, heroes are courageous, they're honest, they're strong, and they're decisive. And Holden Caulfield is actually quite the opposite of all of these. He's actually considered an anti-hero. Holden doesn't, uh, doesn't have the noble characteristics that most heroes have. Holden is a perpetual liar. He um, admits to being uh, a bit of a coward. He says he's a pretty weak guy, so he's not very strong, and he's not very decisive. Holden is plagued by passive inaction throughout the entire novel. So he isn't, he's not particularly good looking, he's not creative, he's not funny, and he irritates people all the time. He worries his parents, he mopes around. Um, but regardless, Holden is also one of our very favorite characters because he can be noble in a way. He has this unceasing desire to protect his family, Jane and just children in general. Um, he's pretty compassionate. Um, he sees Sonny as a person, not a prostitute, and sympathizes with the nuns who never get to go to swanky lunches. Um, and then there's the whole uh, catcher in the right thing, which everything that I'm just talking about will come into light, but I just want you to think about him as a hero or an anti-hero while you're reading. So here are some literary terms to know and remember. A Bildung's Roman is a coming-of-age story. You might have heard of that before. A quest narrative is a character searches for truth, values, or him and herself. A frame story. We actually talked about a frame story when we talked about Mark Twain and the jumping frog of Calaveras County. A uh, frame story is a story within another story. First person, um, this story will be, this novel will be told in first person um, by Holden himself and from his point of view, and we'll be seeing that the word I is being used. Uh, a narrative piece of writing like Catcher in the Rise, a type of writing with the purpose of telling a story. A confessional. Um, story is a when the narrator talks directly to the audience in a very truthful and unguarded manner. Another example of this type of narrator might be uh, Nick Carraway from The Great Gatsby. He's talking directly to the audience in a pretty truthful and unguarded manner. An unreliable narrator. Uh, we again, we also talked about this when we talked about The Great Gatsby with Nick Carraway. Um, it's when the narrator's credibility is compromised, and Holden Caulfield is probably the type of unreliable, unreliable narrator who says one thing but oftentimes does another, or he constantly lies to the reader. Um, so he, may, he is an example of an unreliable narrator. Dialogue are uh, dialogue 
is when you have conversations between characters or even dialogue can be considered between the narrator and the audience themselves. Flashback is when the narrator refers to or takes the audience back to events that have already occurred. Colloquial speech um, is just another way, way of saying slang or the way people actually speak, informal. Um, so when you hear the word colloquial, you should think, okay, slang or informal speech. Stream of consciousness um, is when the narrator narrates when whatever comes to his or her mind when it comes to their mind. Um, a pretty famous, probably one of the, the founders, so to speak, of stream of consciousness writing is Gertrude Stein from around the 1920s, modern American literature era. Um, and she would just write whatever came to her mind, even if it just doesn't make sense. And so we're going to see uh, an idea of the stream of consciousness writing in Catcher in the Rye. Okay, that is it. Um, hopefully you were able to um, get everything for your notes written down. If not, uh, please feel free to rewind this video and find uh, and fill in any notes that you might have missed. Okay, the end.